yesterday. You're going to fail your marriage. No, you're going to love based on who she is. She is my wife. She was made by God. Put it in my life. I'm going to love her and I'm going to love by faith, not by sight. So today I'm just going to talk to you a few minutes about first. You know, there's some things we got to do first. But, you know, sometimes when things don't work, first things first, and you just, you just get confused. You just like, things go wrong way. And you question yourself, why my marriage is acting this way? Why my children are acting up this way? Why I am so bored of my life? Why, why, why? Because there's some things we don't do first things first. We're trying to do other way around. And sometimes things of life, we don't, you know, schools don't teach us. The colleges don't teach us. Only in the Bible you'll find some things in life. Do you know you are three beings? You, you are a spirit being. You have a soul. That means emotions and intellect. And you live in the body. But it's not other way around. It's not the first the body and the soul and the spirit. No, first is the spirit. See, in other words, when the spiritual being is right, emotional state is right. And then the body is right. It's not other way around. You got to start with the spiritual, emotional, and the body. You know, let me look at it in the Bible. Look at the first families. You know, have you ever thought there's a first family in the Old Testament and first family in the New Testament? Let me show you these two families and what they did and what you can learn from them and so what we can do as a family. So Old Testament first family names are Adam and Eve. (laughs) The New Testament first family are Mary and Joseph. In the Old Testament first family, they disobeyed God and consequently they introduced themselves to something so brutally abusive and brutally crazy thing is called sin. We're going to deal with that in a minute. And then eventually God had to come up with the idea. You remember when Adam realized he was naked and he was hiding in the, in the, in the, in the bushes somewhere and the God comes into him and say, hey, Adam, where are you? I love it. God spoke to him, not the angels. God just spoke to him. Adam, where are you? And he said, uh, I am naked. Uh, you don't want to see my nakedness. And then God says, who told you you're naked? God never told him that he was naked. Somebody else told him because he disobeyed God. He gave access to another voice to speak to him. That another voice told him he was naked. And God came and told him, I never told you you were naked. Who told you you were naked? It's like some of us in life that you've been condemned. You've been, uh, you've been ashamed. You've been like uh, frustrated. You've been like, uh, you know, going through all that emotional things. And you thinking that God make you that way. No, God did not make you that way. It's somebody else told you that you're condemned. You're not condemned. Christ never condemns the devil. The enemy will condemn you. So you got to know who is condemning you. Once you know devil is condemning you, you say, no, 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 this is not of God. I'm going to walk away from that condemnation. And do you know, results was that end of the day was death. Adam was created not to die. But unfortunately, because of his disobedience, He died at the age of 918. That's a long time. Imagine if you live 918 years. What could you do, right? I don't know what you could do. I'll be preaching gospel for sure. But, you know, so he's he's dead at the end of the day. But the the new couple that are new in the New Testament, the new family, the first family, that they obeyed God everything. And in fact... The truth here is God never spoke to them. The angel of the Lord spoke to them. The the angel, the Gabriel came and spoke to them. Only angels spoke to them, but they obeyed angels better than Adam and Eve. Because at that time, they all realized, okay, it's time to obey God. Because we saw the path of failures, the path of pathology. And I'm tired of failing all the time. They obeyed everything to the details to God. And guess what? They produce a son. And we know that son's name is Jesus. 
You know what they did? Son came to this earth to give us a life and mercy, grace, truth. And he died for our sins so that we can live. And not only that, they produce a sacrifice. The sacrifice is our Lord Jesus Christ. He was sacrificed for our sins, for our failures, for our mistakes. But my favorite thing is they gave a destiny. They, this couple created a resurrection. So they did not just give a son, but they gave a son to, you know, sacrifice and a sacrifice, took him to the grave and put him down, and finally a resurrection came in. So my friend, these are first families in the Bible. If you want to associate, with whom would you associate? This family disobeyed and produced a sin, sacrifice, and death. But this family obeyed to the teak. If God told them to change the t-shirt, they did. God told them to put on the jeans, they did. God told them to put on the sneakers, they did. They just did everything what God told them. And the results was son was born. Results was sacrifice was born and the resurrection. Today, my friend, I want to encourage you that it doesn't matter what you are up against. It doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter what did not work in 2015. It doesn't matter what situation you might be in today. As long as you take this series of first things first, when you hear God with all your heart, when you put God's voice in your heart regularly and diligently do it, you're going to give a birth to Christ because Christ is supposed to manifest through you. Bible says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. God is not going to come through the ceiling. God is going to come through your heart because Jesus is seated in heavenly places. Now his name is written on your heart and he's dwelling in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So whenever we obey God, when we do right, son will be produced through us. So Christ will manifest through us. That Christ will go before you as a consuming fire, making every impossible possible for you. And that's why you can shout like I shout because you can believe with all your heart that if God is before me, who can be against me? If God is before me, no boss can stop me what I'm born to do. If God is before me, every work will be done according to his will. If God is before me, my marriage will be success. If God is before you, my children will be success. If God is before me, my business will be success. If God is before me, everything I do shall prosper. That's because God is before me. And you can make that happen. Everything in life has an order. It's the same thing with us. We have an order in life. That we need to make sure that we understand that order effectively. A lot of times we don't have that order. So whenever we miss the order, we kind of like make a mess of in our life. We make a mess in marriage. We make a mess in jobs. We make a mess in a personal life. You make a mess in your mentally. You know, sometimes people get confused because they don't know what to do next. People, the reason when they don't know what to do in marriage because they miss the order that God told us to do. So I put it, I put it together, an order for all of us. That according to Bible, so we can look at it. And if you follow this order, my friend, God is going to bless you. And I can tell you this thing. This order is what enemy is trying to destroy. His job is to destroy that order so that you can, you know, look like you're not doing anything. You can look like you, look, you feel like you're failing something and, and all that stuff. But God, you know, set the tone for all of us. He put it in a strategic way so that you can lead your life successfully. Amen. Number one, in our priorities in this year, that number one, we need to put God first. I got two amens. Let me say it again. Number one, we got to put God first. Amen. Okay. When, when I say we got to put God first, we kind of think this way. Well, I go to church. I go to pray. I read the Bible. I guess I'm, in the, I'm, I'm doing the first. No, no. That's not what I'm trying to say. God first means how passionately are you loving God? Are we really loving God passionately? Because the Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Because it's, you know, when you love somebody, to do what they tell us to do is easy. So, in other words, when you love God passionately, you're going to do the commandments easily. You're not going to question him. You're not going to say, well, so-and-so, so-and-so wants this. You know, like, best example is, like, God's, one of the commandments is love your neighbor as yourself. You're going to do it because you love God. You're not going to do it. I hate that person. I don't like, you know, I don't, I don't care what God tells me. I'm just going to don't like. No, because you love God, you're going to love your neighbor. So I'm, when I say put God first, love him passionately. Amen? Number two is family. 
Family has to be after God. In family, there are two sections. Number one is marriage. Number two is children. The way God created this way, first to get married and then have a children, not have a children and get married. <laughs> That's the other way around. You first get married and then have a children. So when you get married, make sure your children comes after the spouse. Then the blessing of the husband and wife will flow to the children. The covering of the husband and wife will flow to the children. And in family, you got to understand that wife and husband, it's important that you honor one another, you respect one another, you, you kind of elevate one another. You can't just have a marriage without having one, two words in the marriage. Can I tell you two words that will make your marriage successful? Not money, two words. Honor and respect. Man requires this too. Woman requires this too. Where, whenever there is an honor in that marriage, that marriage will flourish. Whenever there is a respect in that marriage, that marriage will flourish. When, they, when those two are gone, there is no godliness. They're just going to fight. They're going to talk, they're going to call their names each other, yelling at each other. You know, it totally brutal abuse comes in through our mouths because we're not doing what God told us to do. Honor and respect is important in your marriage. And then put your spouse first after God. So the third element that in order that you got to maintain is job and finance. And do you know, this is the most important thing. So enemy attacks here so that your relationship with God can be broken. So when you get, when you get stronger in this area, the next focus is on job and finances. He's after this as well. That's why God put over 2,000 scriptures to talk about finance. In the finance is a key thing. A lot of times when we look at the finance, we have a different perspective. Finance is the, is the area where God is telling us. Remember, in life, finance plays a major role, including with God. God said, bring 10% to God. And, and when, you, when you want to support your marriage, you need a finances to pay the electrical bill, to mo- pay mortgage, insurance, car payments, uh, school bills, and, and the, you know, clothes and food, and you name it. Everything is connected to number three. So enemy is going to fight here harder. A lot of marriages are broken because of this. Whenever there is no finances is settled down, the marriages are broken. Long run, they might be married, married 20, 10, 20 years, and afterwards they get divorced because this was not taken care of. So you got to keep this in order. Number one, God is number one person and the family and job. Number four is serve. And the reason I put this one, this is a key thing. Everything ties in together. Because when, you, when your job is right, when you get a job, and when you serve, all these three things make sense when you're serving God. Because you got to serve. When you serve the body of Christ, you become the inheritance of that body. Remember, the body of Christ is a spiritual DNA of God on this earth. The body of Christ is Christ's body on the earth. If I'm serving you, I'm serving Christ. So I cannot serve Christ and not have a returns on my life. So I know when I serve you, returns are coming my way. So that's why God said there's some spiritual blessings only comes when you serve. When you serve one another, God will teach you how to be humble. God will teach you how to use wisdom for the money. God will teach you how to love your wife as as you're serving other people's. God will teach you how to serve God as we're serving other people. So that's the reason why God put it in equation. My friend, when you go to heaven, he's not going to say, you're a wonderful husband. Yes, you're supposed to be a wonderful husband. He's not going to say, you're a wonderful wife. Yes, you're supposed to be a wonderful wife. He's not going to say, hey, you really worshipped me very well. You're a great worshipper. He's not going to say that. None of all these things he's going to say, even though we must do that. But this is where he's going to say, well done, good faithful servant. So if you have this order, my friend, God is going to do something awesome with your family, awesome with your life. Some of you probably messed this order up. Maybe we put God here. Maybe we put job first. Maybe we we, we, we put family way low here. But that's why we're struggling. That's why things are not going well. But if you put this order God can bless you and bless your family. The last one, I'll leave it for you, I call a self-indulgence. You know, if you want to go boating by yourself, hunting, golf, you know, camping, they're all great. But make sure this order is right before you go, this one. In all these five areas, 
there are three facets they plug into five areas and I'm going to show with you in, with God with the family with the job with everything there are three facets that they connected with God they connected with your family they connected with your job and serving and they connected with yourself the three most important facets of our future that you need to know these three facets and you need to learn how to maneuver yourself in these three facets. These are first three facets. The Bible talks about constantly so that you can figure out your life in the right direction. Number one, the facet number one is a sin. A lot of times we, we misinterpreted this word sin. Definition of sin, like when somebody look at somebody's drinking alcohol, they say you're sinning. And when somebody says how oh, so-and-so, you know, smoking cigarette, they say you're sinning. They're sinning. You know, smoking and drinking is not sin. I know you're going you're gonna to get my, uh, my attention. There you go. Smoking and sin is not sinning. Let me tell you what smoking and sin. Smoking and sin is the works of the flesh. But there is no benefit on that. You can smoke and drink, but you cannot access the kingdom of God. Bible says the works of the flesh are not going to access the kingdom of God. You can be saved and go to heaven, but you cannot access the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Kingdom of God is the power, and kingdom of God is the joy and peace, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. You can have access when, you, when you're doing the works of the flesh. But the sin is not that thing, my friend. Sin is bigger than smoking and drinking. Sin is the condition of heart. The sin is right here. And the entire Bible talks about this sin all through the Bible to define. But one scripture that I think we need to look at it carefully is it's found in Romans chapter 14 and 23. Look at with me this scripture. Just I want you to, this is where the teaching moment comes in. It says, everything, I think you know what it's everything is, right? <laughs> everything, everything means God, your family, your job, your serving, yourself, everything that does not come from faith. Is what? A sin. By the way, I did not write this Bible. <laughs> it, was, it was written in before I was born. So he gives us a clear definition of sin. Absence of faith is sin. Whenever you don't express faith, it's a sin. Faith is not belief. Faith is a substance of the things, evidence that you don't see the evidence, but you hoped for it. You have for it. You know it. When you lift your hands and call upon the Lord, you know the Lord heard it. When you say, Jesus, save me, you know he will save you. When you say, God, you're going to open the doors for my life, you know he will open the doors for your life. When you say, God, heal my body, you know he must, he will, he will, will heal your body. And that's the faith. My friend, whenever we don't have faith towards God, towards family, towards marriage, we sin. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, are you having a marriage by faith or by emotion? Well, she looks pretty the day you get married. Next day you wake up, she's like, hey. It's like, oh, I thought, I thought you looked so pretty. Well, that was 10 hours of makeup. I look pretty. And if you love based on how she looked yesterday, you're going to fail your marriage. No, you're going to love based on who she is. She is my wife. She was made by God. Put it in my life. I'm going to love her. And I'm going to love by faith, not by sight. By faith. And she is my woman. We're going to work together. We're going to deal together. We're going to walk together. We're going to have a purpose. We're going to raise my children because she's my wife. Same thing with the husband. He's going to... You're going to start off with the six pack. <laughs> Looks like so great. And some of men, they suck it up when you talk to girls. <laughs> How are you? And I, only a few words. <laughs> you suck it up. <laughs> and you think, man, he's got a six pack. And he gets up next day, stuff hanging out. <laughs> I thought I saw a six pack last night. Baby, you don't know. I put a patch in here. Suck it up. So I can look weird. So you don't, you don't get to, you don't do a marriage based on six pack or full pack and nine. But no, you do marriage because God put a covenant with that man. And you know you married that man for a purpose, for a divine glory. I'm not going to judge that man by my side. I'm going to keep that marriage going for my purpose and future. <laughs> That's faith right there. Whenever there is no faith, my friend. You are under attack with the pollution of sin. 
<laughs> I bring my tithe by faith. I worship God by faith. I preach gospel by faith. I serve God by faith. I do my marriage by faith. I go to work by faith. Then I can stay away from sin. Number two facet, important facet, is a sacrifice. The scripture that I have for us here is that First Hebrews 13 and 15, it says, Therefore, by him, let us continuously, not one day, two days, a week later, continuously offer the sacrifice of praise to God. And that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So I'm going to live the rest of my life, no matter what's coming my way, no matter what's working, what's not working, no matter who is with me, who is not with me, my job is to give a sacrifice of continuously offer sacrifice of praise to God. I'm going to say thank for every situation. Bible says give thanks in everything. That is the will of God. I'm going to thank for the month of February. I'm going to thank for the month of March, April, May. I'm going to thank for the things that's right now. I'm going to thank for the things that are about to happen. I'm going to continuously thank God because that's the sacrifice that you and I need to make for the kingdom of God. Thank him. The third one is my favorite one that is really losing in the culture we're living in. Self-respect. We're not respecting ourselves enough to protect who we are. And that's what the Bible also calls to sanctify. Sanctify means set apart. You're holy. You're made in his image. You value your image. Don't let somebody pollute you. Don't let culture pollute you. Don't let the economy pollute you. Don't let the, your friends pollute you. You know, it's important to let go of some of your friends if they're polluting your life. It's, it's important to, you know, uh, retire things that are destroying your life. Look at the scripture. The Bible talks about the scripture. That's 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 and 11. Do you not know that our hoarders will not inherit the kingdom of God? He's asking us a question. And do not be deceived. He's saying, don't be deceived. Watch the word. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men will inherit the kingdom of God. Nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkard, nor slander, nor swindler will inherit the kingdom of God. My friend, God is moving on this earth with his people. He is standing on the mountaintop with his saints, ready to take the families, ready to take the culture. I want you to be part with God. And look at God says, if you do those things, if you're morally believing those things, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The last word says this way. It says, and that is what some of you were. Not you are, you were. Back in days, before you knew Jesus, if you're still doing it, today is your last day for those lifestyle. You just have to say, I'm done. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm not going to be sexually immoral. I'm not going to be watching porn. I'm not going to be doing all the idolatry stuff. No, I'm done. I got to start right this year. I'm tired of being dying inside and faking outside. Have you ever felt somebody like you're so dying inside? You're so miserable inside? You're so fail inside, but you're faking outside? What good is a life like that? You can't be faking outside. You got to be authentic who you are inside and outside so that you can have a meaningful life. You don't have to live for somebody. You got to live for yourself. And the way you're going to live for yourself is respect who you are and make some changes and retire things that are destroying you and walk right direction so God can bless you. This year is your year. And watch the word what God says here. But you are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Not you are. You were. You were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified. Watch the word, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. My friend, I can shout the rest of my life, yes, I was a whoremonger, yes, I was a wicked man, yes, I was this and I was a thief, but I know, thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that washed me away from every pollution of my life, that sanctified me from every pain of my life, and that justified me. 
As we continue on this year, we want to make sure that we put God first in our lives. The Bible tells us that seek first the kingdom of God. All things are added unto you. And it's going to be an amazing year for all of us. We believe this is the year of abundance. Hey, my name is Philip Sundar. I'm a pastor of CJC Live Church located 6401 Bendera Road. If you're here in San Antonio area, please stop by. We would love to say hello to you. We're going to make you feel like you're at home. And our services are at Sunday, every Sunday. Sundays is 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. And every first Thursday we have a communion service. And we would love to have you here. May the Lord bless you.